This is Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here he is, the host of the podcast, A.W.R. Hawkins. Welcome to Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart News podcast focused on guns, gun rights, the Second Amendment. You know, each week we sum these things up under the banner of freedom. Won't do things any different this week. That's because an armed citizen is a free citizen. It's that simple. So good to be with you. So good to be free. We'll get right to the news. You know, we have President Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. This guy is causing some serious problems for the left. And by serious problems, I mean things like I can visualize leftists going in their closets at night, locking the door, and just screaming, just going nuts. Of course, enough of them are in the streets doing that that it's not, it's not hard to imagine them doing that in their closets, in their homes, at their little cocktail parties. But Kavanaugh, the thing about him that's intolerable to them And always remember, the left tolerates everything except what it won't tolerate. Always remember that. Kavanaugh is a problem for them because he views the Constitution the way our founders viewed it. Kavanaugh believes the Bill of Rights protects natural rights that are of a cloth. And by that I mean there's not a bastard right. There's not a second class right. All of the rights are to be protected with vigor. Let's put it that way. So Kavanaugh says that banning a class of arms, quote unquote, is like banning a category of speech, quote unquote. In other words, he understands that if we allow the government to step in on the Second Amendment and say, well, you can own a revolver, but not a semi-automatic handgun, or you can own a semi-automatic handgun, but not a semi-automatic rifle. He understands that if you do that, that's like the government stepping in saying, well, you can use adverbs, but not adjectives. You can use nouns, but not proper nouns. See, it's the same thing because all of our rights are of a cloth. All of our natural rights flow through nature, from God via nature. And he understands this. Now, this is dangerous to the leftists because the leftists, be they political persons or uh, academicians or teachers uh, in public schools, whatever they are, the leftists have worked in unity to try to reduce each generation's knowledge of natural rights and the freedom that those rights represent. And someone like Kavanaugh comes along, and he still has the modern view. You might even say the pre-modern view. He still believes that that our roots are rooted in our Creator, as Jefferson said, it, our roots, excuse me, our rights, and that those rights are all to be protected with vigor. And so... This makes him a tremendous nominee from Trump. I mean, he is absolutely tremendous for you and I, but he is an absolute threat to the left's world view. Folks, other news. This story took place in June, but it it didn't get publicized until this week. And uh, it, it revolves around a Iraqi veteran. That means an Iraqi war veteran uh, who was in New Jersey, lives in New Jersey. His name's Leonard Cottrell Jr. The police came to his house to confiscate his guns. Had he done something with his guns? No. But they had received news that his son, who's 13 years old, had allegedly said something that triggered uh, a report from other students uh, and that he might be a danger or he might be worth investigating, meaning the son might be. So the police came to take the father's guns. And the father told him no. The father said, here's what I'll do. I'll, I'll keep my guns outside of the house until your investigation of my son is over. But he didn't hand his guns over. The fact that they even came for his guns it exemplifies the problem that I've been saying with these red flag laws. See, these red flag laws, and and in New Jersey, your governor, Phil Murphy, he signed one of these laws allowing police to confiscate guns. 
See, with these laws, the son of the gun owner can cause the gun owner to lose his guns. So now, now even though the son's only 13, his actions can lead to the confiscation of guns from an Operation Iraqi Freedom veteran who served three tours. Now, of course, as I say, the veteran did not give him his guns, and he told them that he figured out they didn't have a warrant to do what they were doing, and uh, the police didn't really argue with him, but uh, and he did try to give him some middle ground. I'll storm out of the house until the investigation into my son is over, but folks, this is the danger. Once you put these red flag laws into place, your rights are in jeopardy. They just are. Don't believe the hype. You know, red flag laws were pushed in reaction to the May 18, 2018 attack on Santa Fe High School in Texas. People pushed red flag laws. We need a way to take guns away from dangerous people, they said. Well, here's the problem. The gunman in that attack was only 17, so he's already too young to buy guns, to possess guns. Turns out he used guns that belonged to his father. Now, Is someone going to take his father's guns away because of the behavior of the son? That makes no sense. And if the red flag law had been in place prior to, prior to that attack, it wouldn't have made any difference. Because as I say, the son couldn't buy or possess a gun anyway. These laws end up hurting the law abiding. That's what they do. All right. But the Iraqi war veteran said, hey, not going to happen. Marion Hammer, former NRA president, current NRA lobbyist. Marion is suing male gun controllers for targeting her with hate and vitriol. Now, I, I happen to love this because it turns the tables on the left, the sue happy left. They love suing, don't they? What Marion Hammer says is that she's been targeted by these people. Since the Parkland school shooting, that was February 14th, 2018. For those of you who may or may not remember, or who may not remember, excuse me, that attacker used a gun that he acquired legally, 100% legally, passed a background check for it and everything. Yes, the very background check that Gabby Giffords tells us will make us safer. He passed that background check, acquired a legally manufactured gun in a legal manner. I can't say legal enough here. And then he illegally carried it into a gun-free zone where no one could shoot back, and uh, he killed 17 people. So somehow that's the NRA's fault. And somehow, Marion Hammer has been singled out, allegedly, by these men for supporting gun rights. One of the men emailed her and said, I can't wait till the day I flip on the news and see you mourning a gunshot victim. You're disgusting and exactly what's wrong with people today. I seriously hope karma comes around for you soon. Another one of them allegedly sent an email which said, I pray every day that one of these good people puts a hundred bullets between your eyes so we can celebrate. Someone else called her in a grocery store and said, I hope somebody blows your head off and your family too. And on and on the suit lists quotes from the emails, uh, and gives names of the people that sent them. And so Hammer's seeking $2 million in total. One of the suits is a state-level suit. One of the suits is a federal suit. She's seeking $2 million. Now, look, folks, here's the deal. If you put yourself on the line for gun rights, if you put yourself on the line for speech rights, if you put yourself on the line for private property rights, whatever it is, you're going to face criticism, and you got to have thick skin. You're just going to. You're going to be called names. you got to have thick skin. And you can't take away someone's right to disagree with you and to express that disagreement. Doing that undercuts the very right that you're trying to defend. But this, what Hammer's doing, though, Hammer is taking on something that has gone far past expression of disagreement. If these allegations prove true, If these men have, in fact, told her, look, we hope you're dead in so many words. We hope you're shot a hundred times between the eyes. We hope someone blows your head off. We can't wait till you're mourning a a shooting victim, till karma catches up with you. And those are paraphrases. But if they're saying those kinds of things to her, then this has gone far beyond expressing a voice of disagreement. 
This has hit a point of harassment. It's hit a point of threatening. Now, of course, the judge, the jury will decide that. I'm not making that pronouncement. What I'm saying is this is what Hammer is alleging. So let's see what happens. It's going to be an interesting case. Now, Virginia's Lee County is leading the way in that state. Lee County. They voted this week not simply to arm teachers, but to pay for their guns. Folks, this should be the policy, not just statewide, but nationwide. Lee County explained, look, they can't afford to put resource officers in all their schools. They can't afford that. But you know what they can't afford? They can afford to buy a gun for a teacher, send the teacher for training, and then let the teachers carry and they're not going to identify which teachers are carrying. Uh, the bad guys are going to have to guess. But they know that this is a way to keep students safe. All right? It's very important. Lee County School Board Chairman Michael Kidwell said this. The only way to fight a gun if somebody comes through these doors with a gun to shoot our students is with another gun. Folks, that's common sense. That is one of the most common sense sayings I've ever heard. I'm going to say it again. Quoting Kidwell, the only way to fight a gun, if someone comes through these doors with a gun to shoot our students, is with another gun. All right. School board member Ron Hines, Ron Hines, just put it in a common sense way. He said, look, at least it gives us a chance. If we sat there and did nothing, I couldn't sleep at night. At least we're trying to do something. Now, I share Hines' view. You'll have people all the time on the left tell us that teachers don't want to carry. Well, they already have teachers volunteering in Lee County, and they just voted on it. They're already volunteering. So some teachers want to carry. They got classrooms full of teachers taking the faster armed teacher program in Colorado. So some teachers want to carry. They got teachers' classrooms full taking that course in Ohio. So some teachers want to carry. 20% of Texas school districts allow teachers to be armed, teachers and or staff. So somebody wants to carry. I mean, I could keep going. All right. So there are teachers who want to carry. There, There sure are. And isn't it horrendous? Isn't it horrendous when we read about a school shooting and the student has opened fire in a gun free school and teachers were killed? And you think about it, they didn't have a chance. They didn't have a chance. All they could do was throw an eraser or a pencil or a book, neither of which is enough to stop a bullet or a gunman. Why don't we give them a chance, folks? Give them a chance by letting them be armed. People go, well, you know, they're they're not hired to be police officers. They're not hired to shoot guns. They're hired to teach. That's all true. That's all true. But if you think about each of you who are concealed carry permit holders, whatever your occupation is, you weren't hired for that occupation to be armed either. You weren't hired for that occupation to do this and and carry a gun and defend that. You weren't. But you do that because you understand your life is in your hands, and it is up to you. It is up to you. Folks, you're listening to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. We're going to come back and be with our guest, True Exodus from Instagram, Barrett Fallbush. He is a firearms instructor uh, extraordinaire, and he's got some great information on Instagram. And uh, we're going to talk to him about steps you can take for home safety. And these are well-rounded steps. Many of them, of course, will revolve around firearms, but some of them go beyond that. So we'll be back with Barrett after this. Breitbart News Daily with Alex Marlowe. Jeannie in Pennsylvania. I figure he's gotten away from what we really hired him to do, which is draining the swamp. If you look at the real picture of draining a swamp, you go in and you take all the water out of it. What does it leave? It leaves the gunk. He cannot Mm. get rid of the gunk. We have to get rid of the gunk. Everything he's doing, he's lowering the water so we can see who needs to go. The only way they can go is if we vote them out. Breitbart News Daily. Weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Patriot 125. This is Bullets with A.W.R. Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here, once again, is A.W.R. Hawkins.
Folks, welcome back to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. Listen, we got a guest this week, uh, Barrett Fallbush. You, uh, you can see him on Instagram, True Exodus. Uh, that's his Instagram handle. And, uh, man, he's got hundreds of thousands of followers that love to watch him review and shoot guns. And uh, he, he, he uh, does some pistol and, and, and firearm instruction. I shouldn't limit it to pistols, firearm instruction. So we're going to talk to him about a few things. Barrett, so good to have you on. Hey, no, thank I, I appreciate the opportunity of being on. Why don't you talk to us a minute? I know you don't want, because you shoot so many guns, you don't want to pick one gun and, and isolate a gun maker or ostracize. But uh, why don't you tell us, for people who might be in the concealed carry market for the first time or they're not, they haven't shot a lot in their lifetime, they're looking for that first concealed carry guns, what kind of guns immediately come to your mind when people are trying to make that decision? Sure. No, uh, for me specifically, what I see in classes and what I see people move to and so on and so forth, um, <clears throat> I have a bias towards the Glock 19. And the reason why, just the stock Glock 19, usually Generation 3 or Generation 5. And I guess the reason why I prefer the Glock 19 is because of its shootability and its reliability. It, what I mean when I say that is, how shootable is it? How well does the, the gun help my grip, uh, help, help me secure a, a good grip upon the gun, the grip angle? What does it feel like as far as its bore axis when I shoot it? Does it jump around in my hands a lot or does it stay relatively on target? <clears throat> so essentially, I look for forgiving guns, but also guns that are going to help people develop good fundamentals. And, um, and then I look for reliability. I'm not gonna carry a gun unless I can introduce it in a lot of different elements like water, sand, dirt, things like that, because I don't know where I'm going to be finding myself uh, if I were to get to a self-defense scenario. And so with all those things in consideration, primarily for me, I like the idea of a shootable gun and a reliable gun. So it is trigger really good. Are the sights, do the sights communicate well with the shooter? And so when I look at all of these things, I like the $450 to $500 price range of the Glock 19. That's primarily what I suggest to people, and um, that's primarily what um, people go with. Right. Here's what's funny. I just got to say this. You and I have never spoken before. Well, if I want to be completely honest, except for 10 minutes before we're speaking now, and that was just to set up this time. But if anyone asks me the, the greatest semi-automatic handgun on the market, uh, I, or the the one gun I would want to have. It's going to be the Glock 19, and uh, yeah. it's just funny that you would say that. That gun is gun is ugly as sin, but huh. it, it goes bang every time. It yeah, just, it's. I test a lot of guns uh, because I've just I'm just so blessed by God to to receive a whole bunch of guns from different companies, and, and primarily the thing that I find. And they send me ammo, too, so I get to put 2,000 rounds through most of the handguns that are on the market right now. And, um, and, and, and I just keep coming back to Glock 19. It's what I'm carrying right now. I, there's a lot of guns out there that I'll carry and that I, I shoot really well, but for whatever reason, my heart just keeps coming back to this silly platform. Right up. Let, let me let me let me just throw one thing at you. I'm not trying to throw a curveball, but that 19 was the preeminent – firearm in my mind for so many of the things you talked about the the, yes. the gun that comes closest to it in my mind and in some ways i like more in some ways is the h and k vp40 do you ever shoot any of the h and k vp series be it a vp9 yes. or a 40 yes yeah i shoot the vp9 and i love that gun the gun just jumps around a little bit too much in my hands because it's got a higher bore axis um the sights are not the best in the world but they, they they do have that nice combat side picture for people who like that and but i think the biggest things about it is just the ergonomics right and the trigger uh, is what makes that gun just really shootable so you put that in people's hands you know they love it uh, because it's it's they, they're accurate with it uh, and they can hit what they're aiming at but it's, it's harder to get those rapid follow-up shots right now i will say that the vp9 and um the P30 are both guns that my wife and myself are very familiar with and we use to defend our homes. Right. So we, we, we trust the reliability in the home. Uh, but for a carry gun, 
it's a it's a little bit bigger it's a little bit more bulkier than i tend to like right and now i have the vp40 and i put i took the stock sights off and i put on uh, some of the true glow sights that are day and night sights yes. and i'm gonna tell you what that is an incredible weapon i'm just gonna say i mean it is incredible but i do understand the things you're pointing out it just happens to fit my hand perfectly you know and, now a, gl- a glock being aside aside from a glock i absolutely love and i swear by them i used to never do this but the walter ppq m2 is by far the most reliable underrated gun if 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 I did not carry a Glock 19, I'd carry a Walther PPQ M2. Right. Now, I carry a Walther PPS M2, and I happen to love that gun. Uh, I, lo- I love the PPS series as well. It, they did a great job reworking the grip so that it fits your hand so well. Uh, great job. Now, look, look, Barry, here's what I want to ask you. Sure. Let, let's say we have some folks. They're trying to figure out home defense. They want to protect their family. I don't know that we focus on this enough. And uh, what would you say? What are not just one point, not just two, but maybe three or four points you could list or things that would immediately come to your mind from, from firearm selection to whatever you want to say, but points that fathers or mothers and fathers and mothers should think about for home defense? Well, primarily for me, the first thing I think about is just can people get into the home? And uh, so I, I like to think about doorways and uh, windows, things like that. And essentially, the average, the average home intrusion happens in less than two seconds. So it doesn't take a lot to get through most people's doors or windows of how they currently have them set up. So I like the idea of making sure you have really sturdy doors, making sure you have reinforced doors, things like that. Uh, making sure that you all have the family has a lock plan and what that is is my son knows and it gets really annoying now as as he's five years old that he'll shut the door and lock it even though he knows dad is outside and that annoys me uh, because I go to uh, 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 open up the door and it's locked so my children and my wife know that when a door shuts the door's locked and simple things like that uh, are you know are are often overlooked but that would be one thing i would say the second thing i would say as far as just home defense is concerned is uh ensuring that you have you know a readily available weapon we tend to keep our guns in the safe and because you know for whatever reason when we come back we take the gun off and we put the gun someplace else So if the gun is in a safe, I would recommend either carrying a firearm on you in the home or I would recommend carrying a gun or having a gun stowed away that's easily accessible. On top of this point comes another point. Uh, I have a three and a five year old and my my children know you never touch a gun. They 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 understand the extreme and dire consequences if they were to touch one of me, you know, spanking them, you know, to their brains fall out. But aside from that, we don't carry around the chamber in our home. So I carry around the chamber on my person. But when we come home, magazine comes out, round comes out, round sticks itself back into the magazine, and the magazine goes back in the gun and the chamber is empty. And we do that for, you know, just conscientious awareness that, you know, the gun's loaded, but it's, it's quickly able to be put into that loaded position but it's relatively safe and inaccessible for our family. I'm staying with your train of thought, but I want to make a point. It's, it is much easier to work in action than it is to open a safe, retrieve a gun, and work in action. It is. And, I so, mean, that's important. And so oftentimes, you know, remember, uh, kids have very limited perception of their surroundings because they're smaller and they can't see over things, things like that. And so having a weapon on top of the refrigerator that they don't know is there may be something good to do if they can't access that point on top of the refrigerator or up in a cabinet somewhere. If you're always in the living room kitchen, and it's an open concept, maybe having a, a firearm that's stowed up and out of reach uh, on a top level shelf or, you know, when you open up the pantry, it's on the top level with 
all the miscellaneous things that you normally don't use from day to day uh, that's up there. You know, something along those lines. Um, and then I always have a bedside gun. So I sleep with a bedside gun and I have a shower gun too. So I have a gun that I have near me when I'm in the shower. I have a bedside gun and we have a, a, a gun that's in the kitchen that we can readily access. What? Uh, so when we go on longer trips, uh, those, you know, where we're going to be gone for two or three or five days or whatever it happens to be, those guns get put away in the safe. And when we're at home doing our normal day-to-day things, those guns are out. Well, let me let me let me ask you this, Barrett. I, now, when I take a shower, if I'm home alone, I, there's a gun in the shower. Uh, so yeah. I, you were laughing when you said, it. "I don't think it's funny because if someone comes in, they've got you isolated in that shower. You you either have the ability to fight back from that point, or you're done." So, That's right. You're not. You don't have a lot of ability. That's really when you're the most vulnerable. But you know, the the chances of a home invasion happening are are very small to begin with and the chances that they would happen you know it, the, the the chances that they would happen when you're at home are even smaller than right. that uh but but that brings me to my next point of having more people in the home trained uh oftentimes we think about just the the dad being trained but really the dad goes off and he works every single day and most home invasions happen in the middle of the day not at night time and so because most, ha- most happen in the, the middle of the day, uh, it doesn't take a person, it doesn't take a very intelligent person to know that a home is best defended when the owner of the house is not home. Um, and Jesus even talks about this in the Gospels. He says, are you going to rob a strong man's house when he's at home? No, you're going to wait till he's outside of the home and then you're going to rob it, right? And so... Uh, you know, and with that in consideration, mom, especially if she spends most time around the children, she's going to have to know how to use a firearm. She's going to have to know how to, um, you know, uh, be able to shoot a gun properly and, and and work a gun, so on and so forth, and have the attitude, the mindset behind those things. Right on. So, so that's that's another point that, to consider. And then my final point is just to have a plan. Um, we at our house, we have a very loose plan uh, so that we can stay and remain flexible. But my children and I always like to play a game. We play a, a hide and go seek game and we incorporate this hide and go seek game into a little bit of safety when we say, hey, we want you to go run and hide. And it, it doesn't matter if we call for you. It doesn't matter what unless we open it up, we physically see you and touch you. You are not to get out of that hiding spot. And so we have that right there for when uh, we communicate that if something bad were to happen or if someone's in the house, you hear somebody else's voice that's not supposed to be there and you don't know where mommy and daddy are to go and, and to just run and hide and, and mommy and daddy will come find you. And we've never had to implement that. Nothing like that has ever taken place or happened, but that's something else that we consider. And then we're also starting to work our children on medical the understanding of what a tourniquet is, why we'd have to use a tourniquet, talking a little bit about how blood needs to stay in the body and it can't come out. These are things to understand, you know, to kind of communicate to a three and five year old that we're, that we're slowly working in and slowly trying to understand and uh, uh, extend not only our knowledge as a family, but uh, our, our children's knowledge as well. Let me, let me ask you one question just as a, to end our time together. Cause someone, I still can't get it out of my mind. Someone heard you say shower gun, and they have never they never got past that point in our conversation. Yeah. And uh, when you have a shower gun, does that mean you have a stainless steel weapon in there that will not rust? Does that mean you no, have a, no, you know, no goodness, nothing like that. I'm just no. saying, how, explain what you mean when you say shower gun, because people are going to yeah. wonder. So I have a gun that I have a gun uh, that exists right in my pantry that's right next to the gun and that's where we keep our towels and things like that but it's accessible it's inaccessible to my children the cabinets are very deep so it's hard to see it unless you're six foot five Uh, you're not going to be able to see it and it exists up there and i know that it's a shower gun meaning that i know that when if i would have to grab the gun with what hand i could rack it I know I could use it, and if water were to get on the gun, I know that it'll shoot submerged. I know that 
you know, those different types of right things. On. So. Right on. That's awesome. Well, Barrett, thanks for making time for us. And listen, listeners, again, Barrett on Instagram is True Exodus, T R U E X O D U S. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, I was just going to encourage people to just go out and get training. Um, you know, we, we scour the internet for resources and uh, as much information as we can. It seems like sometimes to keep us from just going out and getting the actual training. Right. But really just. Uh, you know, if you're really interested on, in home defense, get a home defense consultant, somebody who will actually come into your house, who will, will look at the layout, help you develop a plan, maybe talk to you about some things you haven't talked about. So if you're, you're in a time in your life where you're actually, you've got conflict with another individual or you worry about the uh, def- uh, safety of your family because of an ex-husband or because of domestic violence, whatever it happens to be, I would strongly recommend not just purchasing a firearm because having a gun doesn't make anybody any more armed than owning a guitar makes you a musician. Right. And people really need to understand that just training and mindset goes so much further than actually owning a firearm that's, that's, that I would incur- highly encourage people to go out and seek the training. I couldn't agree more, Barrett. Thank you. Thanks for making time for us. I know you're busy. Absolutely. Thank you. If you need anything else, please don't ever hesitate to ask. Thank you. Uh, Folks, you're listening to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. We'll be back right after this. Breitbart News Tonight with Joel Pollack and Rebecca Mansour. A lot of people not knowing what action they could or should take to make the difference. What I do is try to turn people on to sites like Breitbart, you know, people who are writing and publishing the truth so that people will get educated. But, you know, you kind of can't blame productive members of society who are kind of confused, perplexed as to what do we do to take this Serious XM Patriot Channel 125. This is Bullets with AWR Hawkins, a Breitbart.com podcast. Here once again is AWR Hawkins. Welcome back to Bullets with AWR Hawkins. Folks, I wanted to just talk to you a minute about what Barrett said. You may have heard me giggle when he mentioned a shower gun. And the reason I giggled is because I I take a gun in the shower with me every now and then. Uh, I know you're going to think I'm crazy for saying that, but I do. And I don't think it's crazy at all. I think it's the point he's talking about. At those places where you know you're most vulnerable, it's nice to have a firearm. And I take in a gun that has has a good finish on it that's not going to rust if it does get wet, but it's, it doesn't even get wet where I keep it. I have a certain shelf that the in the shower that the water doesn't hit. I just set the gun on it, and uh, that's it. Because if someone gets all the way in that home while you're in the shower and they get to you, well, you're basically at their mercy, and I don't like that feeling. I just don't. So that's that. Folks, uh, I want to move on. I want to talk about an important, an important decision or or verdict this week. Uh, the DOJ and Cody Wilson's Defense Distributed reached a settlement this week. Now I'm going to give you some background, especially for those of you who are new to the podcast or to Breitbart. You may not know the background, but in 2015, Cody Wilson's Defense Distributed and the Second Amendment Foundation brought suit against Obama's DOJ because the DOJ had shut down Cody's uh, share ability. And by that, I mean this. Defense Distributed had uploaded files so that you could make your own gun at home. These included instructions on 3D printing, programming to print a firearm in 3D with a 3D printer, and, and, and basically what you needed to know to build a gun at home. And uh, the DOJ shut it down, told him he couldn't share that online. Well, so he sued. Instead of suing on a Second Amendment issue, he sued on a First Amendment issue that the DOJ had violated his freedom of speech. And guess what? The DOJ, and he reached the settlement this week, and uh, he can now share without, without any limitation. He can share that information online. It's, it is huge. 
It is huge, okay? Uh, the Second Amendment Foundation founder and executive vice president, Alan Gottlieb, said this. He said, not only is this a First Amendment victory for free speech, it is also a devastating blow to the gun prohibition lobby. For years, anti-gunners have contended that modern semi-automatic sport utility rifles are so-called weapons of war. And with this settlement, the government has acknowledged that they are nothing of the sort. Now think about that. He added, under this settlement, the government will draft and pursue regulatory amendments that eliminate certain controls over the technical information at the center of this case. They will transfer export jurisdiction to the Commerce Department, which does not impose prior restraint on public speech. That will allow Defense Distributed and Second Amendment Foundation to publish information about 3D technology. Folks, this is a massive win. The only way I know how to express this is this, that the, if the Democrats get control again, if they control the country again the way they control, let's say, California right now, and they ban this class or that class or they do whatever. I'm not going to get into those things. But they their gun control gets ramped up. You can make your own gun at home. That's what you're finding out. If you're not barred from having a gun. I mean, if you're, a, if you're an otherwise legal gun owner who is faced with so many hoops to go buy a gun at the sporting goods store, you can just buy your gun at home. Make your gun at home, excuse me. I spoke with Cody Wilson about the settlement after it was reached. Here's what he said. Our culture will not just be preserved, but will have new life in the Internet. The age of the downloadable gun has formally begun. I'm going to read that again. Our culture will not just be preserved, but will have a new life in the Internet. The age of the downloadable gun has formally begun. That's phenomenal. And I believe Cody's 100% right. He's 100% right. Listen, folks, we had a guy this week who tried to, he tried to break into a, to his third home, allegedly. Allegedly tried to break into his third home. And it didn't work out good for him. He got shot a number of times. I believe the way the police worded it is he got shot a few times. All right. Now, this took place in Richmond, California. I believe he had tried to break into two homes. It was unsuccessful. Got through a window in the third home. He's 47 years old, allegedly goes through the window, and the homeowner uh, just lit him up, lit him up, all right? Richmond Police Department Sergeant Lynette Parker said this, the family had no other way to protect itself other than self-defense. So the homeowner, uh, in what he did, according to the police at that point, was justified. So folks, let me just say this, that story is brought to you by the Second Amendment. Folks, just have a lot of things on the horizon now for you to pay attention to as we close out this podcast. And Kavanaugh moving through the Senate is going to be one of them. Be sure you're emailing your senators, you're tweeting your senators, you're calling your senators, always politely, always politely. But call, tweet, email, write handwritten letters repeatedly and urge swift confirmation of Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh is key to preserving the Second Amendment. And I'll be honest with you, he is an example of President Trump doing exactly what he said he would do when he said he would use the Supreme Court to save the Second Amendment from people like Hillary Clinton. He made that statement on October 9th, 2016, in the presidential debate. He has made good on it. He made good with Gorsuch. He's making good on it with Kavanaugh. Now, he can nominate him. He can nominate them, but he can't confirm them. The Senate has to do that. So it's up to us now. It's up to us now to let our senators know. We would love to see Kavanaugh confirmed. We want it done, we want it done quickly. Because Kavanaugh is the kind of justice, let's face it, we, when we voted for Trump, many of us voted for Trump knowing he was going to have a chance to secure the Supreme Court. And this is an example of him doing that, and now it's up to us. We support Kavanaugh by reaching out to our senators, and I can't say it enough, always politely. Being rude when you speak with them is the easiest way to get them to ignore whatever it is you're going to say. Listen, 
get your friends, your family members, your neighbors uh, to subscribe to the podcast, uh, your coworkers. And once subscribed and listening, have them go back to the original page and give us some reviews. We need all the reviews we can get, five-star reviews. And listen, until the next time we're together, always keep in mind, regardless of what the left says, more guns equal more freedom. Sonny's Corner with Sonny Johnson. Everything in hip-hop is not bad. Kanye agreed with us, so let's love him today until he raps tomorrow and you turn your back. Because if you jump off when the fun of the moment is over then you are, in fact, making Kanye the token he is accused of being. So please, don't do that. Don't go there. Sunny's Corner with Sunny Johnson. Saturday from 1 to 3 p.m. East on Sirius XM Patriot 125.